This uh, ugly little boat is raking the seabed for seaweed, as you can see, it's just springing up the comb. This boat is doing the same. This boat is also doing the same. They're all within a mile of each other and they do it in the same place for up to a year. This map, the green, the light green, shows where it is allowed on the Norwegian coast. Down below the light green area this weed, or any weed, does not grow apparently, which is harvestable. Until recently it has not been possible to harvest above Trondheim due to a plague of sea urchins brought about by this method of seaweed harvesting. This paper talks about up to a hundred thousand animals and plants per cubic meter. These stalks washed up after target hauling in the area are nearly completely bare. There's very little growing on them. This is what healthy seaweed stalks should look like. Look at this, the roots of animals the whole stalk is full of animals and plants clinging to it. It would probably be not inaccurate to say that the entire Norwegian coast is being used as a seaweed farm. For further information, the above paper, net algae, is easily found on the internet and very informative. The big question is why is there so little life in the seaweed forest after the plants have grown back? The reason is that it takes six to nine years for them to grow back completely. The harvesting is done every fourth year or less. Seaweed has always been a source for iodine, for industry and medicine. But the question is what role does it have to play in the biology of the plant? And here is a clue. This is very basic to many, many land plants and trees. It has been noted in Africa that acacia trees, when attacked, produce a poison. And this is actually lethal to the animals attacking the trees. There is also a very complicated symbiosis, but there is no reason to assume that this is not the same in the marine environment. The first information we had on this came from a Crown Services document in the UK on the possibilities of seaweed harvesting and seaweed farming off the coast of Scotland. Essentially it said that iodine and iodine related compounds are released when the seaweed is stressed. Another paper goes even further to say that the iodine compounds and bromide compounds can actually affect the weather. The big question is what other effects does this release of iodine have? In approximately September of 2012, heavy tardar trawling started in Hustavika. In February of 2013, we noticed that all the cod in shore at Hustavika had discolored livers. This, by the way, is a normal cod's liver though large in size, it is normal. This is from Mart Tilsinet's website. It says that you should not eat cod's liver from fish you have caught yourself. This is the same bird the next day just dead. We found others like it behaving strangely and then they just die. The big question is has this anything to do with the iodine being released by the seaweed forests and are the fish discolored fish livers from the same source? We can see the birds dying but we can't see the fish dying. Are the fish dying too? This article was drawn to our attention. It is about thiamine deficiency in seabirds. There is the possibility of a strong connection between this syndrome and the bird deaths we are seeing here. 
There is also a distinct possibility that it is related to the seaweed being destroyed by tata trawling on the coast. One possible consequence of this is the lowering of the immune system in the birds leading to a massively increased risk of infection by diseases such as bird influenza. The consequences of this would be absolutely horrific. Further reading of the article shows that the birds lose their appetite and no longer seem to be very interested in feeding. In other words, they literally starve to death. In many bird colonies in the north of Norway, something similar to this has been occurring. To say that this is caused by thiamine deficiency is pure speculation. However, it has been proven extremely difficult to contact the ornithologists concerned and even communicate with them. They have theories of their own and they don't want to hear any others. Seaweed harvesting occurs in many countries, in particular Chile and Peru. These two countries have seen large die-offs of marine mammals and birds in the last two years. This, again, is speculation, but there is nothing else that seems to fit. This is a document from FAO, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. It details some of the world's seaweed resources. In fact, its reading is quite frightening because there is no mention, not anywhere, about the ecological issues. Just, there is an awful lot and it should be harvested. This map from the EU-sponsored organization called Net Algae shows the activity of seaweed and seaweed harvesting in Europe. This is an extract from uh, the paper on French seaweed harvesting by Net Algae. It shows that an international agreement is clearly being broken. In England this type of seaweed harvesting was banned many years ago. One of the most important things that seaweed does, apart from providing a habitat for many animals, is it cleans the sea. It removes dangerous chemicals and pollutants. Could this be why so many areas of the Norwegian coast are heavily polluted? Here is a list of over 30 places where you should not take anything from the sea to eat because it's too polluted on the Norwegian coast. This little snip from the Crown Services document says that 20 square kilometers of seaweed removes approximately 480 tons of nitrogen from the sea per year. According to this, there is between 50 and 100 million tons of seaweed on the Norwegian coast. This means it removes something like 114,000 tons of nitrogen per year from the sea. What the overall effect on the nutrient level in our seas from all this seaweed harvesting activity worldwide is, no one knows. This is incredibly dangerous for our environment and for us. A little example, this U-boat sunk during the Second World War on the Norwegian coast contains a large quantity of mercury. The containers are breaking up. If seaweed cleans the sea of substances, including mercury, then it is insane to remove it. But this is what is happening. We have papers and records which actually show that seaweed does remove a large amount of mercury from the sea. What is happening in our seas is nothing new. The evidence is there quite clearly for anyone to see. This talks about seaweed harvesting in Japan as long ago as the late 1800s and the effects it had on the ecology there. The company running and benefiting from the tara trawling on the Norwegian coast is FMC Biopolymers. It is one of nine companies in the FMC Corporation in America. FMC companies have a long history of severe environmental damage, price-fixing cartels, even direct fraud. 
the worst is probably the production of furidan or carburifan which is responsible for the decimation of wildlife worldwide even the production of lithium for the so-called environmental cars is causing huge environmental damage in the Atacama Desert. The close ties between Norwegian environmental agencies and large businesses such as FMC Biopolymer should be examined if our environment is to remain healthy for us. There are a great number of other aspects of FMC's business on the Norwegian coast that should be examined as well.